Hi guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Uh, I'm going to tackle part two now of uh, a series I'm doing on Australian found antique bottles. And what we'll tackle this time in fairly simple terms really is dating the bottles. Um, it's probably the biggest question as far as new people either learning about the hobby or trying to find out about a bottle they've found is how old is it? So. I'm going to break this down into a few sections. Um, for this video, we'll just look really at shapes of bottles and manufacturing styles and uh, and colour of the glass and crudeness. Um, probably the two other major things in dating bottles are the type of enclosure, the tops they have, and also uh, the base mark, particularly if it's a glass manufacturer's mark. So we'll look at those in separate videos. But as far as we go here, um, I've got a selection of bottles. We'll start with ones pre-1900, or up until about 1900. And we'll just work through these and give you a bit of a guide. Now, Australian uh, antique bottles, or at least bottles, have been made in Australia. Uh, glass bottles probably only since about the 1880s. So um, anything pre-1880s or 1870s really is imported stuff and all these ones here are typical goldfields bottles around the 1850s 1860s era um, and these were most of the bottles of this era were english made um, but australia certainly wasn't making glass bottles at this stage uh, earlier in australia's history we did have um, pottery bottles uh, stoneware or referred to as convict um, bottles or spruce bottles or ginger beer bottles um, and I'll show you a picture now of some of those. Um, you're very unlikely to find them as far as a beginner collector goes. Uh, they're very sought after. They have you know, really important links to early Australian history uh, and consequently um, do have a specialist following and can bring a lot of money. Um, so you can see by the photos there that they're, uh, they're very crude. They're almost like a, a a school pottery project they droop they sit at funny angles um, and it's a real tangible link to Australia's colonial history um, of course they're not all made by convicts but they're referred to as convict era bottles so um, the ones there with names stamped in are, um, are quite sought after anyway we'll get back to what you're more likely to find around um, either fossicking around Australia or out in the bush or under a house and the earliest you're really going to come across is these goldfields things. Um, these are known as black beers, goldfields beers, or goldfields blacks. Um, they're called blacks because obviously they look black. Uh, the glass itself is actually a, I can, should be able to show you on this one, is actually a, a dark olive or a dark green. They vary, of course, depending on the glass mix. But they are generally referred to as goldfields blacks. And of the same Goldfields vintage, you can find uh, pickles and oils. And I'll put a few photos on here because I don't actually have any handy. And they're all very crude. Um, once you handle them for a while, you will certainly get a feel for them. Um, the glass is generally quite thick. It's usually quite worn because the Goldfields, um, traditionally very gravelly country, and any that were thrown out usually have lots of scratches and whatnot on them. Uh, earlier English ones can have the registration diamond on them, which was used up until 1883. So uh, that's a way of dating them as well. Um, they're not all black, so as you've seen from the oils and vinegars and pickles, there's also some of these greens. Um, most of them have in common a lip where you could have tied a string to hold the cork down. Uh, they're all different in that they're pretty much handmade and if I can get that to focus properly, you can also see um, there's nice twisting marks to the neck of the bottle. Uh, every one of these you pick up as an individual. The bases are often quite offset. Sometimes the bottles sit on angles. Um, and the crudeness is really something that, that is attractive. And I can see why they're collected as a, as a collecting area. Um, look at the top on this gin. Now this square one's known as a case gin, it's pretty much a free-blown bottle um, and it does, this one I think does sit um, and actually wobbles so the quality control back then wasn't the best they pretty well just knocked them out as best they could 
So the crudeness and the colour is the best indicator of a mid to late 1800s bottle. Uh, this green one, whilst it doesn't have the black look, it does have lots of elongated bubbles. Um, and this one also exhibits what's referred to as a three-piece mould. Now I'm not sure if you can see there, but the mould comes down the top and then goes around the top of the cylinder. And that um, that three-piece mould design was was used pre-1900. Um, now, dating bottles is a not an exact science. Um, manufacturing techniques from various places. Um, some changed, some were more uh, progressive. Some of the smaller glass manufacturers stuck with old machines for a lot longer. So it's really uh, a... Um, you know, you just got to you got to look at an era rather than an exact date. Now, this little one generally you don't see clear glass bottles from uh, pre 1900s. This little one's probably a French bottle, a little perfume. And if you can see there, it's got quite a an obvious pontal scar where the bottle was attached to a stick or a rod in the glass making um, manufacturing process. Process probably I think it was still made in a mold. This one, but the top would have been hand tooled so um, the marks to the base are a good indicator of, um, of age also back in the mid to late 1800s you can find um, underglaze transferred pots and also toothpaste pot lids and I'll put a photo up here of some um, they uh, we used a lot uh, a lot of the early ones were English but some of the Australian chemists used them and some of the Aussie ones can command really big dollars depending on their rarity. But they were used pretty well um, through the late 1800s up to around 1900. Now this, um, this big tall one's a vinegar, known as a dimple vinegar. Um, they're not normally embossed, but this one actually is. Uh, and you can see that it's an English bottle. But it's a great example of how crude the tops can be um, in that it really just it's clearly been put on molten and then sagged a bit to one side. So that's something to look for with dating them is, is the crudeness, um, the glass colour as we've said, um, the three-piece mould, this one actually shows that much clearer. Bubbles in the glass uh, is quite common. The glass has a whittled effect and really the best way to learn is just to handle them as much as you can, look at as many if you know people that collect bottles ask questions have a look um, it takes a long time to acquire a bit of a feel but eventually most seasoned collectors will pick up a piece of glass no bigger than a, a coin and be able to tell you not only its date but what bottle it came from uh, and you can't you can't just pick up that knowledge overnight so uh, really it's just a matter of of soaking up the information enjoying the history so bubbles in the glass i mentioned with this one that's not an indicator directly of old glass because they can certainly make newer glass with with that sort of effect. Um, likewise, the colours of the glass can be reproduced. So indicators of age, really, you've got to look at a lot of different factors and use all those clues, put them together to be able to date a bottle. Um, as I said, generally clear glass bottles aren't that old, um, but this one has enough other factors to indicate that it is right I'm moving towards the end of the 1800s we see a lot of these stoneware bottles these are called um, stout bottles they're generally English or Scottish I think they often say Glasgow on the stamp um, they're common around the 1890s to 1900 um, tips and they made them by the millions I would suggest um, they don't hold much value but they are they are quite old, they're genuine antiques. Um, then we have a, a Pickles here, which is probably just before 1900. Um, again, the top has been applied, and you can see a bit of a droop in the glass there. And the base, even though this one doesn't give us any indications, it is slightly oval. So, um, really, you've just got to... You've just got to get a feel for it. Now this attractive looking bottle here is known as a torpedo, or it's actually a Hamilton's patent. Um, they made these torpedoes 
uh, from the mid 1800s with a square type top right through to around 1900 so if you find a, a torpedo bottle like that you can be assured that it's uh, around 1900 or earlier also around that era they had what they call a Lamont bottle um, and the glass color here is very typical of these uh, same with the torpedoes uh, same with a lot of bottles around this era uh, and the cod bottle the marble bottle also is around this one's around 1900 or just before so um, you'll recognize that glass color after a while even though you can see that in more modern bottles uh, again it's one of the clues that goes into dating things uh, these are very thick very heavy glass uh, and you do get lots of little bubbles and things in there as well but not all old bottles are thick and heavy some of these um, gins uh, if you've ever seen one of these broken the glass is super thin and delicate so um, you know the thickness of the glass isn't always the uh, the key but it's just some information to go with uh, beers all the beers back then were early were green uh, these are known as a ring seal beer this one's probably around 1900 it's actually a sandblasted one most of them you'll find a plain and any that are embossed are usually quite scarce they have a massive indentation underneath that nearly goes up half the bottle uh, referred to as a kick up by bottle collectors um, perhaps a bit of a marketing ploy it made you think you were getting more beer than what you actually did and uh, here's another beer uh, this one is actually a crown seal I just included this it's probably might be a little bit after 1900 this one but I included this to show that the crown seal isn't just a modern top it's actually been around since the late 1800s but we'll get into the top enclosures in a different video um, moving on here we have another gin this one is probably around 1900 again but the base as you can see is different to anything else we've shown uh, but it certainly has that whittled glass look uh, it's that olivey green color and this one has the remains of a lead wrap that went around the top I mentioned earlier um, about the tops on these other ones having a, a groove for the string which was to hold the cork in and also the ring seal beers were the same much like a champagne bottle today to wire the cork in because some of the concoctions they brewed up back then probably had a fair bit of punch and the bottles needed to be strong and the cork needed to be securely attached uh, once you get to around 1900 you're also starting to find ginger beers transfer ginger beers uh, earlier of course ginger beers were much like the convict ones and I'll put some photos on here of some impressed ginger beers um, and these ones uh, date from probably the 1850s goldfields era through to about 1890s or so um, and you will find that most of them are plain some have a potter's mark if you find any with a, a shoulder stamp or a stamp that um, declares a, it was a from a small local town somewhere in Australia then you're likely to have something that could be very sought after but most of them will be plain ones uh, back to these pottery items transfer ginger beers started to come in around the close to 1900 uh, and we'll do more of those in the next section uh, ink bottles usually always had a pouring spout most of the inks were English uh, but you can actually find some that are Australian like Bendigo pottery or Fowlers from Sydney uh, but generally speaking inks have they made them in huge quantities and uh, they're not likely to be worth a great deal but some people like to collect them these ones are known as stove blacks um, this one has Dalton Lambeth stamped on it so it's an English one and uh, that was of course before it became Royal Dalton around about 1901 so that's another way of dating that a larger stove black here different glaze and the preserving jar I put here is probably a bit after 1900 but um, I've had people say they've got a bottle from the 1850s where it's actually just a patent date so don't be tricked by that uh, something to look on with jars if you're not sure how old they are an old jar will exhibit plenty of wear around the base contact points because it's been used a lot whereas general bottles may not have been used that much they may have been purchased consumed and thrown out within a short period of time so you won't get the wear to the base uh, last of all in this group is a um, some soda siphons now generally these are into the 1900s but this one 
is um, an older one, and I know that because it says Sandhurst on it, which became Bendigo in 1891, I believe. Uh, and it has a bit of a purple tinge, and that's another clue with bottles from around 1890s through to about 1920s. Um, they actually used uh, manganese dioxide, I think it was, in the um, glass mix to get away from this natural greeny colour. The greeny colour was due to iron impurities in the glass, or in the, the sand, I guess. And the manganese compound actually stopped that, but it do, does react with UV light from the sun, and it will turn purple. So not all clear glass bottles will turn purple, but some do. And it's that era from sort of late or mid 1890s through to about 1920, and I'll show you some more in the next video of the beautiful sun-coloured purple bottles. Um, if you don't know what side to siphon is, that's another one I'll put there with the top on it. This one's missing the top. So there you go. This video has gone much longer than I thought, um, but that's a give, bit of an idea on dating pre-1900 bottles. you really got to look at the, um, the type of glass, the impurities in the glass, like bubbles, in some cases the wear to the base, like on the jars. Um, most of the English ones won't be uh, marked underneath or they may have a registration diamond but um, there's also the crudeness to take into account and uh, as I said it's not an exact science you've really just got to add up a lot of clues to give you a bit of an era you know so you can say all right these are goldfields era could be anywhere from 1850s through to maybe 1870s and um, the stouts and that other pickles at the back you know probably more 1890s through to 1900 but that's about as good as you can get with um, with dating bottles. So I'll follow up this video with another one from about 1900 through right up to 1960s. And uh, hopefully that's some, some help. Okay, thanks for watching. I better sign off. It's gone a long time on this video, much longer than I thought. Talk to you next time. Bye.